Election Day. This is a wonderful time for us to come together as residents of the District of Columbia and supporters of full democracy for the District of Columbia. This is a day where we take the day off, but we should not take the day off about thinking about how to expand true representation in the Congress of the United States and statehood for the District of Columbia. This is a day where the mayor, the council, ANC commissioners, our senators and representatives come together with representatives of every neighborhood of Washington, D.C. to talk about how we advance the cause of democracy and statehood for our city. So let me acknowledge all of the wonderful leaders who are here uh, to stand up and speak up and to discuss among our ourselves where we go from here. So let's acknowledge the leader of the Council of the District of Columbia, Chairman Phil Mendelson. Give him a big round of applause. And I think I've seen the members of the council, but let me start uh, with Council Member Charles Allen from Ward 6. Give him a big round of applause. And Council Member Kenyon McDuffie from Ward 5, give him a big round of applause. <laughs> Council Member Jack Evans, also known as Jack Evans from Ward 2, give him a big round of applause. Council Member LaRuby May from Ward 8, LaRuby May. Council member David Grasso at large, give him a big round of applause. <laughs> Council member Alyssa Silverman at large, give her a round of applause. <laughs> Council member Yvette Alexander from Ward 7, give her a big round of applause. <laughs> and my council member Brandon Todd from Ward 4, give him a round of applause. And I also want to acknowledge a person, uh, you know, if, if it wasn't for him and his leadership, everybody would be at work right now. Instead of talking about the cause of statehood in preparing ourselves uh, for a fight that we need to take around our nation. And I want to acknowledge uh, Vincent Orange for his leadership on Emancipation Day. I have been proud uh, to be a partner last year and this year with Council Member Orange on presenting ed an educational program, a celebratory program, and an advocacy program all around Emancipation Day. I also want to recognize our Attorney General, Carl Racine. Where's Carl Racine? Give him a big round of applause. I want to thank Carl for also for his partnership uh, in, in helping and in committing to helping us advance the cause around the nation. Uh, senator uh, Michael Brown is our senator and give him a round of applause. Our Senator Paul Strauss. and our representative Garcia. And we want to acknowledge and thank um, our delegation. And Phil and I, over the last year, with the shadow delegation, has been working very hard to focus our efforts and our resources on the causes uh, before us. We are very privileged uh, today uh, as well, and I am, to have a great team that serves me and the Bowser administration that works super hard all day, every day, to make sure the agencies of our government are delivering for the people of Washington, D.C. Now, we've set a bold agenda, uh, and we're focused on how the prosperity that we are experiencing in Washington is really enjoyed um, by all Washingtonians. 
I had the opportunity to go on uh, a good friend of Washington, D.C. on her show last night, Rachel Maddow, to give her a round of applause. Now, that Rachel Maddow is something else. Uh, and she understands what we're dealing with in Washington, D.C., and she's willing to use her airtime to tell everybody else. Earlier, it was John Oliver who used his program to educate everybody about what we're dealing with in Washington, D.C. Uh, but part of her intro uh, to talking about Emancipation Day and statehood and our relationship with the Congress was, D.C. is doing pretty great. Uh, we can learn a lot across our nation about how wonderful things are in the District of Columbia and how insane it was that our local dollars had to churn through the federal government process like a federal agency. So that is the, the message that is up to all of us to continue uh, to spread. Uh, that's why we are very privileged today to have the incomparable Elaine Jones serve as our mistress of ceremonies. It's true. Elaine knows a thing or two about civil rights and voting rights, doesn't she? And uh, this is a civil rights and voting rights matter that we need uh, to take to the people. Uh, so before I uh, move on, I do want the members of the Bowser administration to stand up and be recognized as well for the hard work that they do each and every day. Now, friends, uh, our, we are pretty large in number, and our, our friends at the Willard are so great to us because they made another room available. So just beyond this wall is, our, is another room fill, filled with Washingtonians, and they can see us on that camera. So everybody look at that camera and give them a wave. <laughs> And we want to thank them uh, for being here uh, as well. So let me uh, also thank our members of Congress, and I know that Elaine is going to introduce them as they come to the podium, but I want to just share my thanks uh, to them as well. Uh, first, our friend, our good friend from, our very good friend from South Carolina, James Clyburn. Give him a big round of applause. And our very good friend from Alabama, Terry Sewell. Give her a round of applause. And we always recognize the great efforts of our congresswoman and warrior on the Hill, who would, of course, be here, but she's, she's helping the next president of the United States right now. And she had to do that in New York. But we're going to see her tomorrow during the Emancipation Day festivities. So let's give a big round of applause for Eleanor Holmes Norton. So today and tomorrow, fellow uh, residents, we celebrate Emancipation Day. Uh, and this marks, this day in 1862, of course, was when President Lincoln freed all enslaved people in the District of Columbia. And that was a full eight and a half months before he signed the Emancipation Proclamation. So on this occasion, is this, that's a worthy day to celebrate, isn't it? Uh, we honor, yes it is. We honor the many champions, past and present, who fought for equality, civil rights, and democracy in our city. And at the same time, we use this opportunity uh, to look to the future. Uh, more than 150 years after President Lincoln signed the Compensation Emancipation Act in the district, the rights of nearly 700,000 people who call Washington, D.C. home are certainly not equal. Our democracy is not full. And unlike the rest of the United States, we do not have a voice in the halls of Congress. D.C. residents pay billions of dollars each and every year in federal taxes, more than many states, yet we have no vote in the House, and we don't have anybody in the Senate. Our military serves honorably, 
Our people serve honorably in the military, and they fight for the rights of all Americans. And yet we have no vote when it comes to sending our troops to war. No representative who can advocate on our behalf or vote for services for our veterans. So we can imagine what that means, of course, in, in, in practical terms also. A girl born and raised in Ward 8 in Washington, D.C., when she prepares uh, to vote when she turns 18, she will not have the right to vote for a senator, like a girl born in Silver Spring or Vaughville or Alexandria or Arlington. If she moved just one mile away, she would have representation and she would have two senators. But by living in D.C., she is, those rights are stolen from her. So we need to think about that girl in Ward 8 or Ward 5 or Ward 4, any ward in Washington, D.C. We got another, yes, let's think about her. Earlier this week, we had a stark example of what it means to not have two senators. We saw senators from Maryland and Virginia in a meeting with our Metro officials. Metro, a compact between Maryland, D.C., and Virginia. Metro, an agency that we pay almost $400 million a year. They got called to a meeting with the senators. Where were our senators? Now, we had Jack Evans sitting at the table. Thank goodness for that. But it became very, very clear to me, as I've had the great privilege of being your mayor these last months, that we, of course, need Eleanor to have a vote. But having one vote out of 535 is not going to do it. Having two senators is where we can get a lot of action at the Congress of the United States. Here's another example. Another example. You know that our president sent a very qualified nominee to the Supreme Court of the United States. And we all know how, how nominees to the Supreme Court get confirmed, right? In the Senate, we have no vote on that matter whatsoever. How many of you want to complain about the process that the Senate is going through on Judge Garland? I want to complain. I want to, how many of you want to demand that your senator not only take a vote, demand to hear it, and vote on Judge Garland? I do. But we don't have a senator. And be, be very, very clear about this that the direction of our Supreme Court in the years to come affects D.C. residents. And that's what we need to make sure that we continue to demand. Our zip code should not determine our ability to enjoy the franchise. Now, even our friends in the Congress sometimes get this confused. And we'll, we'll blatantly admit the reason why D.C. residents can't have full access to the franchise is because there are too many Democrats. Can you believe that? Now, do you think access to democracy is a Democratic or Republican issue? It's an American issue. And we need to demand of Democrats and Republicans full democracy and statehood for the residents of Washington, D.C. So this morning, you will hear from a panel of experts on how voting rights is a civil rights issue and on how talking about voting rights is important, not just for us, but we need to be focused on it for our entire country. They will offer a range of perspectives on the long struggle for civil rights, voting rights, and justice throughout our history in the United States and in our city. And as you listen to the program today, I ask that you consider this. What bold steps can we take to achieve full de democracy? More than that, what bold steps are you willing to take to achieve full democracy. Think about that. Who's willing to take some bold steps? I know I am. Uh-oh, uh-oh, Beverly. I, it wasn't that loud. 
who's willing to take some bold steps? Come on, council member. We need council member Silverman to take some bold steps. And so I know what, I'm going to do my part. I know Orange is going to do his part as well. And so what we promised was that we would be bold and we would strike out in new directions. And weren't we proud of the fight that we launched for budget autonomy in the District of Columbia? <laughs> weren't we proud of our statehood advocates? Weren't we? Give them a round of applause. Weren't we proud of the Council of the District of Columbia? Give them a round of applause. And we were so appreciative of our courts who upheld our view. You even give them a round of applause. That was a bold step. It was a different step as well. And so today I propose that we take another bold step towards statehood in the District of Columbia. It's going to require all of us. It's going to require that we send the bold message to the Congress and the rest of the country that we demand not only a vote in the House of Representatives, we demand two senators. And we demand... the full rights of citizenship in this great nation. And the way we get there is statehood. And so I am going to send legislation to the council in the coming months to put the question of statehood for Washington, D.C. on the ballot this November 2016. Now, if we put statehood on the ballot, who's going to be with me? And my hope is that you will join in this great effort to send the strong signal and to change the trajectory of our discussion, not waiting on Congress to act, but acting as residents of the District of Columbia. So with that, I want to invite uh, to the podium our mistress of ceremonies to, to begin our panel, Elaine. Elaine, actually, before I um, do that, I want to ask, um, I, got, I got it wrong. I got, I got all excited about pathway to statehood. Um, let me first uh, introduce uh, Council Member Vincent Orange. I've already said why he's been so important to the recognition of Emancipation Day, um, but also uh, very important to really the fight that we are engaged in on making sure the prosperity of Washington, D.C. is spread to all Washingtonians. Vincent Orange.